welcome to another episode of The Doc Is In. My name is Dr. Yasmin Abdelmajid. I'm a neurologist, Parkinson's disease and a movement disorder specialist here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Today in this episode, we have Dr. Usman Mogul, our consultant neurologist and our headache specialist here at the hospital. Together, we'll be discussing about migraine and how to manage them. Dr. Usman, good morning. Good morning. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Uh, always a pleasure. Uh, thank you for having me here. Um, it's always uh, uh, important to have uh, awareness of migraines. Absolutely. Glad to be here. So let's start with the basics, right? Um, as neurologists, we always one of the most common conditions that we always face is headaches and specifically migraines. So um, can you tell us what is migraine and how is it different from other um, headaches? So that's a very common question. Um, a, a lot of patients ask us that when they come to clinic. So a migraine is not just a regular headache. A migraine is a neurological condition that uh, usually presents with one-sided headaches that are often severe in presentation, um, often a throbbing characteristic as opposed to a um, pressure-like sensation. Patients often have nausea, vomiting. They're sensitive to light and sound and often they will require some type of rest. And the headaches usually last about four hours. So when you're describing that, you're probably dealing with a migraine. All right. And um, what is dangerous about migraine? Like when does it become a red flag? So generally, migraines themselves aren't uh, dangerous. Uh, sometimes patients do get uh, what we call auras. Auras are any neurological symptoms, most often visual symptoms. Patients can describe anywhere from flashing lights to loss of vision, those are the most common type of auras, but other neurological auras can be sense, um, uh, numbness, difficulty speaking, uh, weakness of one part of the body. So when patients experience that, they worry obviously and often they'll present to the ER for evaluation. Those are the red flags we look for. So if you're having symptoms that are not a classical migraine and you have some aura, it's better to get evaluated. Um, other headaches that you worry about are headaches that are, um, if you have a fever with a headache, if your neurological symptoms don't go away, it's better to get evaluated. Absolutely. Um, are there specific triggers that patients need to be aware of and that, so they can avoid and maybe reduce their frequency of headaches? So there are a lot of triggers out there. Everybody's different uh, in their presentation and what they feel are triggers. But the most common ones are stress, poor sleep, uh, dehydration, um, and people often have certain foods. So common foods that can cause uh, headaches are high sodium foods, foods with MSG, um, preservative, artificial sweeteners, red dyes. All of these are uh, common triggers, and everybody has their individual uh, trigger as well. All right. So um, another question that we get commonly in the clinic is this genetic, right? Um, um, do I pass it on to my children if I have a condition such as migraine? Yeah, so there is a genetic role. We know that, uh, you know, a certain uh, population, so it's sometimes children start getting headaches when they're less than 10 years old. And so obviously there's a genetic component to that. Uh, but migraines are so common in the world anyways. A uh, huge per percent of the world's population has migraines. So it's very common from environment. But yeah, there's a genetic component to it as well. So the earlier you know about your family history, the better it is and the better we can manage. So what are the most common age groups that usually present with headaches? So most commonly it's seen in a reproductive age group in females. So around 13, 14 for, uh, for girls and then uh, they have uh, peaks and valleys as, as they get older. Uh, and for males it's uh, variable as well. So uh, you know, you don't see a lot of children with it, but it can happen. Uh, but it's during the reproductive age group, and then things go up and down. All right. Um, so generally, how do we, I know that's a very big question, but generally, how do we manage migraine? What is your go-to um, approach? So I like to focus on lifestyle modification because we know that's a huge uh, factor in patients' migraines. So even if I'm treating patients with migraine-specific medication, Every time they come to the clinic, I'm, even if they're two years into the follow-up with me, I'm always stressing uh, on lifestyle modification. So, you know, improving your sleep, uh, making sure you're hydrated, avoiding stress, whether that's physical stress or mental stress. And so that's always uh, a baseline of what I talk about in the clinic. Aside from that, we have a lot of uh, uh, 
medications that are available to treat the pain. Um, there are two concepts, basically, when you speak to a neurologist, what it's called an acute treatment and a preventive treatment. So generally, acute treatment is something that you take when a migraine starts, you take a medication, uh, it's supposed to help reduce the pain and the most bothersome symptom, which can sometimes be nausea. And then uh, the preventive therapy focuses on patients who have migraines that are more than 15 days a month. Uh, even, uh, sometimes they're less, but if they're debilitating, we work on uh, certain medications that can uh, prevent migraines. Right. And um, of course, recently there have been a lot of new medications, right, that are coming up for migraines. And patients come in and ask, other than the oral tablets that they take, um, we heard about injections, nasal sprays, and even Botox at some point. So could you tell us more about the new medications that are on the, and that you use with your patients? So yeah, there's a new class of medications. It's not very new, but uh, maybe five or six years old. Uh, they're called a CGRP antagonists. Um, they're migraine specific. So if you look back to 10, 15 years ago, we had uh, we have paracetamol, we have a lot of other like ibuprofen, common drugs that we use for knee pain, for back pain, they can also help headaches. But these molecules, the CGRP antagonists, are more specific for migraines, so they're not going to help you for your knee pain. They're very good at, what, at, at treating migraines, uh, similar to what the triptan medications did, so uh, a minimal side effect. So th uh, these are the newer molecules. But generally when the patient comes in, we talk about other comorbidities, other medical illnesses that they have, and we base the treatment on an individualized approach. The newer molecules um, are, can be used as an acute uh, treatment, as a preventative, uh, and they come in either oral forms or injectable medications. And we have Botox, which has been out since 2010, which is very good for a preventative therapy. So generally with that, you're looking for a patient who is suffering from headaches more than 15 days a month, out of which most are migraines. Uh, and you start Botox treatment for them and they improve significantly. Everyone's different, but what you're looking for is an improvement uh, over three months of at least 50% reduction in frequency or intensity. Right. So another common question that I also get in my clinic, um, does Botox work alone or is it just an add-on to the current treatment? Uh, so Botox alone can be very effective as well. There are certain patients who are only on Botox and their frequency has uh, improved by 90%, uh, sometimes even 100%. Uh, but if they have a lot of other comorbidities, if stress is a big factor, you want to address that as well. So sometimes if they are on Botox and they still get, let's say, one headache a month, then you want to, you can give them uh, an acute treatment as well to add on to it. Very good. So, but the overall purpose of starting Botox is to overall reduce the frequency and intensity. And what is the expected reduction? So usually when we talk about preventive medications, we know that migraines are not curable, right? But they're very well managed if they're managed correctly. Um, what is the percentage reduction in headaches that you promise your patients with preventive therapy? So I don't really promise anything, but uh, historically we've been using 50% as a cutoff mark. So we, when patients come in, I, I educate them and say, we're looking for at least 50% reduction in frequency or intensity. Uh, but you know, honestly, I'm looking for more than that. I'm looking for, um, you know, improvement in lifestyle, uh, better quality days. So I give them the 50% uh, at least, but I'm inside I'm hoping for more like 80, 90, and hopefully more than that in, down the line, the newer molecules that are coming out, we can hopefully uh, treat patients much better. All right, and um, are patients expected to be lifelong on these preventive medications, or, or do you use them for a certain period of time and then you taper them off? So, uh, most of the time, I expect uh, patients to be on it for at least six months. Um, the guidelines say six months to eight, anywhere up to 18 months. Mm -hmm. So, but every six months or so, I ask the patient to just reevaluate whether we can taper off the medication or not and work on our lifestyle. Um, that's where the, 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 you know, discussing them in the clinic when they come in about their lifestyle is important every single time so that they're not relying on these medications. Yes, some patients do have chronic and refractory migraines where they're on it for four or five years uh, while they're dealing with chronic other chronic issues. But uh, the aim is always to be on it for no more than six months, anywhere up to 18 months. Right. Now that you've seen thousands of patients in your practice with headaches, what are the, the golden advice you'd give for our patients to help them manage their migraine and just to help them have a good quality of life? 
I think education is still the, the, uh, the cornerstone for me, uh, letting them know that, uh, you know, migraines are treatable. Uh, I focus on them learning their body. So, um, you know, sometimes patients, when you ask them about what is a, how many days of migraine they get, they, all, they only include the, the day that they have pain. They won't include the days where their mood changes or their diet changes. That's all part of the different phases of the migraine. So I ask them to be educated on what they're feeling, how they're feeling, so that they can make a diary, you know, log these things. Uh, and then over time, they can learn what their triggers are. And if patients don't, um, sometimes it takes them a while. So I tell them my example of it took me a few years to find my migraine trigger. So it takes a while, but that's where I educate them. I, you know, I think that's the more important thing so that they're not relying on medication. And because it is a lifelong illness, it's better to get a handle on it early on. Absolutely. Um, any final thoughts that you would want to give our patients? I think for me, um, you're not alone. I would say to the general public, the migraines are very common uh, in the world. Uh, a lot of doctors suffer from them as well, so they, they know what people are going through. They are debilitating, my, uh, you know, they are dis disabling to patients. So um, if, if you're feeling like you're, you can't manage it on your own with regular medications, it's probably better to see a doctor about it so that you can go over options that you have. Right. Dr. Usman, that was very useful. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for joining in on this episode, and we'll see you in another episode with another expert very soon.